Hannah Johnson with the Murphy Group Carpenter Realtors. I'm here to talk to the Humane Society. This is Trisha Pierce. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at the Humane Society of Hendricks County. Um, wanted to discuss what goes on here and what you can do to get involved. So Trisha, thanks so much for being here. No problem, thanks for having me. So with the Humane Society, what is your primary goal or mission? Our mission is facilitating animal welfare, ending pet overpopulation, furthering the human animal bond and humane education of the community. Uh, what opportunities do you find for humane education? We will have um, Girl Scout troops or Boy Scout troops come into the building. Typically they want to do a craft, so we'll um, have them make adoption bags. We do have a group that is making up some foster kits for us this year, so that when we get um, baby bottle kittens that we can just hand a person a kit and everything is all ready. Um, and then we also uh, will go out into the community. Um, we've had some library programs where we do take like little kittens for people to handle and we talk about the importance of spay neuter um, so that uh, you know the pet overpopulation problem that we have can be solved through spay neuter. Um, so if you could give me a little info on the Humane Society, how did you guys get started and when? It was founded in the 1970s and um, when they first started they didn't have like an actual physical location. Um, they just helped people with their pets. We've had the building for almost 10 years now and we have a small pet adoption program. Uh, we have our community cat program which helps um, people in the community that are caring for community cats. We have volunteers that can go out and humanely trap, um, take the cats down to the Brownsburg Low Cost Bay Neuter Clinic, get them fixed and vaccinated and released back to their caretakers. Um, our community cat program is vital to the Humane Society because about 80% of cats and kittens that enter the shelter system come from community cats. And there are statistics out there that say only about 10% of community cats that are born outside make it until they're six months old. Wow. So we want to help alleviate the suffering of uh, community kittens as well. Yeah, so community cats is kind of your prime um, mm -hmm. program that you're working on currently. Right, and we also have an owned animal voucher program. We have our pet food pantry where Hendricks County residents can participate once every 30 days. Their pets are required to be fixed through that program as well, and the Humane Society helps them with that. We also have our pet owner assistance program where people can get um, funds if their pet has a medical emergency. Okay, um, so let's talk about the adoption program mm -hmm. here. Um, do you primarily have cats or dogs in that adoption program? Here in the building, we primarily have cats. All of our dogs are in foster homes. We have a very small adoption program because we do focus on getting at the root of pet overpopulation, which is helping the community get their animals spayed and neutered. Through your adoption program, if someone were interested in adopting, how would they go about doing that? Well, we're open on Mondays, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sunday, noon to 4 p.m. Now on Sundays we typically will have a foster based rescue in the building and they will bring their dogs and if we have any dogs available through the Humane Society they may be in the building as well. But they may also bring in cats or other small animals if they have small animals that are available as well. Okay, cool. So uh, through the adoption program, is it best for someone to come visit the Humane Society? Yes, it would be best to come um, when we're open. That way they can see what cats and kittens that we have available and then um, they can go through the adoption process then. Okay. So your adoption program, where do those animals primarily come from? Most of our kittens come uh, from our community cat program. If we're at a location trapping and we do see kittens that can be socialized and adopted out into indoor homes, we will bring them into our program. Our adult cats are mostly owner surrenders. All of our surrenders are by appointment only. So if someone needed to surrender a cat or a dog, they would need to contact us at the Humane Society first. Okay, understood. So give you a call before bringing in right, an animal. Right, right. Uh, if someone was interested in becoming involved in the Humane Society, what are some um, ways that they can volunteer their time? Well, we have um, several volunteers uh, that we use um, here in the office. They could help with filing, um, help distribute food through our pet food pantry program, um, or um, we also have an off-site um, food pantry program that we collaborate with gleaners on um, giving out food at their gleaners locations. Um, so we're at the fairgrounds the first Friday, and then we alternate Stylesville and Pittsburgh every month. 
Um, so we do help with, uh, the, we do have volunteers that help with the off-site food distribution. We always need people to help uh, humanely trap our community cats or transport them to the clinic. Or sometimes we have adoptable um, kittens or cats that are here that may need to go to a vet visit or may need to get down to the Brownsburg Low Cost Bay Neuter Clinic. Um, we do have a, an excellent volunteer opportunity if someone wanted to just see what our um, community cat program was about on um, February 29th at 2 p.m. at the Danville Library, we're going to be having a workshop on trap neuter return. So if people are curious as to what our program does and how they can help our community, everyone is welcome. Awesome. Okay. February 29th. Um, you mentioned TNR. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little information about TNR, what it means, and why it's important to uh, the community? TNR is important in our community because, as I said before, about 80% of cats and kittens that enter the shelter system come from community cats. Most of these cats have been abandoned by their owners or they may have been born outside and never really truly had an owner. So what is, what is TNR? What does TNR stand for and what happens to the animals during that process? TNR stands for Trap, Neuter, Return. Um, how the process is initiated here at the Humane Society. If someone has cats or sees cats in their community, they can either call us or they can go online to our website and click Get Help and then click Community Cat TNR Assistance. They fill out a form and our Community Cat Program uh, coordinator will reach out to them and see um, what level of help they will need from the Humane Society. If they just need vouchers, do they need help feeding the cats, do they need help trapping the cats, do they need help transporting the cats. Um, if the homeowner is able to um, do everything themselves, then we try to uh, let people do as much as possible that they can themselves because we have a limited number of volunteers. We do have some volunteers that are able to go out. Um, they set up a humane trap for the cat. The cat goes inside the trap. It's taken to the Brownsburg Low Cost Spay Neuter Clinic where they will fix the cat. They vaccinate the cat against rabies. They apply flea medication and they also um, tip the left ear. That's a universal indicator of a cat that has already been fixed that's in our community and it is being cared for by the community. Perfect. The animal, after a brief recovery period, the animal is then returned to its outdoor caretaker. Okay, so if you see an animal, a cat, um, in Hendricks County that has an ear tip and is not in any medical danger that mm -hmm. you see, you should leave that cat alone? Yes, as long as the cat appears to be taken care of, that's the best place for the cat. Perfect. Uh, can you explain why um, spay-neuter might be important for an animal? Spaying and neutering um, reduces fighting, reduces roaming, um, can extend your pet's life. Obviously, if your pet doesn't have the reproductive organs, then they won't get cancers of the reproductive organs. Um, and that also uh, decreases the amount of unwanted animals that we have in Hendricks County. So um, as far as cats that are found outside, is this the best resource we have available to help reduce the amount of animals outside? My opinion is that spaying and neutering does, when done in an effective and systematic way, will reduce the amount of cats that are in Hendricks County over time. Okay, great. So if you live in a community that um, you see a lot of outdoor cats, a way for you to get involved and help that might be to contact the Humane Society and do some TNR. Mm -hmm. Great. So are you a resource, uh, if people are, are interested in TNR, mm -hmm. could they reach out to you just for education and then um, get the TNR help on their own? Yes. Um, Kathleen is always happy um, to help people. Um, she loves to educate the public and it helps us spread the word of TNR. It's hard to imagine, but you know there are people that don't know that we have a, a community cat program. There are people that don't know that we have our pet food pantry and that we do help people get their pets fixed in Hendricks County. Perfect. Um, so tell me a little bit about the pet food pantry. Um, so people donate this food and then you're able to distribute it? Mm -hmm. um, some of our food is donated. Um, some of our food comes from like busted up bags that come from area stores. We have volunteers that go out and pick up the food and bring it back to the Humane Society. Um, participants are allowed to visit once every 30 days. Uh, we will hand out dry food. If we have canned food or treats or cat litter, we will try to give that out as well as long as we have some available. 
Um, like I said, all their animals have to be fixed and the Humane Society gives them a voucher to help with that. Okay, perfect. So if their animals aren't fixed and they're in need of help with pet food, mm -hmm. they can reach out to you to get help on spaying and neutering. Yes. And how does that process work? All they have to do is come into the Humane Society during our regular business hours. Our regular business hours are Monday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and Wednesday and Friday, noon to 4. On Sundays, um, we're just open for adoptions only. We can't do anything with Pet Food Pantry on Sundays because we just have volunteers that are here on Sundays. Um, they can um, bring proof of residency and they can get signed up for the Pet Food Pantry. We ask them if their pets are fixed. If they're not, then we help them get vouchers and get them fixed. Okay. So we talked about community cats. Mm -hmm. Beyond community cats, do you find that there's a need for spay neuter in owned animals? Uh, we did have a spay neuter uh, voucher special in February um, where we handed out almost a hundred vouchers for owned animals, dogs wow. and cats in five hours. Wow. So there definitely is a need in Hendricks County. People want to get their animals spayed and neutered. And with um, the addition of the high density housing in Hendricks County, we feel that there is going to be an even bigger need for people that need uh, financial assistance to get their pet fixed. Um, but we cannot do that work without sponsors and donors from our community. So how does the Humane Society get funding for programs like that? Well, we do have a couple of um, big fundraisers that we do. We have our um, wine tasting in the fall, and then we also have kind of a, a fun fundraiser at the beginning of the year called Dogtona. And so we also do um, some dine to donates. We have individual donors and we do have um, some uh, businesses in Hendricks County that do in kind donations for us to help us out as well. Awesome. So can people reach out and donate specifically to the Spay Neuter program? Yes, um, they can um, donate through our website. It's www.hendrickshumane.org. And if they want it to be designated for Spay Neuter, they just have to note it in their donation. If you want to get involved in the Humane Society, is there anywhere for them to come and get training? On April 7th at 7 p.m. we will be holding a volunteer orientation. The volunteer orientation is located right here at the building, 3033 East Main Street in Danville. We're at the corner of 300 East and Old 36 in Danville. So should they email you before or just come to a They training? can just show up and see um, you know, what volunteer opportunities are available and get signed up then. Okay, perfect. Do you have any programs available uh, for people who may just need a little bit of help if their animal runs into an issue? Right, we have our pet owner assistance program, uh, which can provide a um, financial, which can provide financial assistance for people um, whose pet may have had a medical emergency and um, they need uh, just a little bit of help to get them through so that the pet can stay in the home. That's also part of one of our missions is furthering the animal people bond. We want people to be able to maintain their pets in their home instead of having to surrender them to the shelter because they have a minor medical emergency. Do you find that this program helps divert um, people from having to surrender their animals? Yes, um, sometimes unfortunately the animal may have waited too long for medical care. Um, so we're also able to help the um, owners in the suffering of the pet, you might say. Um, but we do find that most of the animals that do receive help from our um, pet owner assistance do remain in their homes. Um, what's something important that you would want the community to know about the Humane Society? I think that the community needs to know that every donation counts. Um, it doesn't have to be a thousand dollar donation from a specific individual or business. We can do um, a lot with just, uh, you know, five dollars here, five dollars there. It only costs thirty five dollars for us to have a cat fixed through our TNR program. Um, but by doing that, just that thirty five dollars alleviates a lot of suffering of the mom cat and of the kittens that may be born in the future. Mm -hmm.